G'day my friends, this is Marty Ware from Marty's Garden on YouTube and today we've got Meet the Beneficials, Natural Enemies of Garden Pests. Now I've got my daughter Karen home with me today because she was a bit sick, but she is my best pest spotter extraordinaire, those eyes. She can find a lot of these bugs and the pests and tell me what's going on a lot of the time before I see them. So say hi Karen. Hi. Hey, which is your favourite uh, garden pest or your favourite garden insect? My favourite garden insect is praying mantis. Praying mantis, yeah, they're really nice, aren't they? But you like the lady beetle too, don't you? Yeah. You like to collect them. Yeah, I like all the insects. Yeah. Alright, thanks darling. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye, we'll see you a bit later. Okay, now the car's off too. Uh, relax a little bit she wasn't well last night but today we're looking at um, the natural enemies of garden pests now the reason why I asked Karen to come in is because I've been teaching her about beneficial insects in the garden and you know for us to actually you know uh, learn about this and actually share it with others and then you know put it into practice can make a huge huge difference in the garden now it can say here predators hunt attack and kill their prey encourage these natural enemies by avoiding pesticides that kill them choosing plants that provide them pollen nectar and shelter and keeping out ants out of pest infested plants common predators that eat garden pests are pictured below now you won't be able to see all these real well in the video so there is a link provided down below if you're in YouTube and you can open that up now and listen to the video at the same time while scrolling down through the ebook now you can see on the top left yes there's a lady beetle there and he's chewing into an aphid and they can eat up to up to a hundred um, aphids in a day which is just really amazing now another thing that we need to do and understand is by providing and, and understanding our beneficials is obviously by spraying as least as possible and only in severe infestations do we need to spray. The reason being is we're always going to have some pests around because our predators need to have food. So if you see a small amount and they may be putting a couple of holes in your leaves, don't worry about it. It's when they start really making mass damage and spreading and you can see they're building up more and more each day that you may need to consider spraying with a natural uh, pesticide. But just wait until uh, you believe that it's the sort of extreme case because a lot of the time these natural predators will take them and clean them up and eat them and gobble them. Now we need to find out uh, what, what the eggs look like but generally if you see eggs laying around on leaves and things you know it could be either a pest or a predator but uh, just leave them leave them at bay and they will get cleaned up one uh, of the adults that I like is the lacewing and this is quite easily to spot the green lacewing and you know they eat nectar pollen and some insects also we've got green lacewing larvae which they eat a lot more than actually like a lot of the larvae will eat a lot more insects so they're more carnivorous when they're younger then before they turn into an adult and some of them have like a 50% of meat and vegetable diet. Now you can see here uh, if you've got this open, if you haven't opened the PDF please open it you'll see it directly below the lady beetle. The eggs, they always look like they're on a long strand of wire or you might look at it when I remember as a kid seeing it, it looked like a, a spider sort of thread. And you can get them uh, a lot like lace wing eggs, that's very common. And also you'll see something very similar to that with the assassin bug. So if you see that type of legs, eggs lying around in the leaves and twigs and things, uh, leave them be because they're all kind of, you know, the larvae, as I said, will clean up more pests than the actual adults. Now obviously, yes, we've got ground beetles, which do a great job in cleaning up, uh, you know, bad... Uh, rotted mulch and different things and they will also eat a little bit of carnivorous stuff. We've got our ground beetle larvae which will also feed on you know almost any type of invertebrate. And then we've got assassin bugs which are one of my favorites and when I was studying agricultural business uh, one of my majors was 
to study, you know, uh, study farming, but we studied organics, and I majored in avocado production as well. And the assassin bug was a great one for cleaning up uh, the the little like stink bugs and things. And they would eat the eggs, and they would actually eat the adult, like small adults. Well, you know, coming into maybe teenagers, <laughs> however you like to call them. But yeah, they would do a great job. And we spotted the eggs, and then we stopped spraying, as you know, um, and slowed down like the spraying. And then we really reduced our rate of uh, damage done to our fruits. And you know, inside avocados, you'll see a piercing, and sometimes you'll chew into one, you'll get a little woody bit. That's from the actual stink bug piercing down and drinking from down inside the avocado and uh, they, they can be a real menace, but they are natural in Australia and many places around the world. It's just that we're monocrop farming and they come in to grab as much food as they can. So we've got things like pirate bugs, damsel bugs, soldier beetles, uh, all different types of spiders. You know, uh, another one of my favorites, and Karen's favorite, is the hoverfly. Now you do need to have a lot of flowers around for the hoverfly to appear because they love to eat a lot of pollen and the larvae will actually consume quite a lot of insects and the actual hoverfly uh, it, I'm pretty sure it will uh, take a little bit of food every now and again in the meat variety but I think it's more when they're actually in the larvae stage and they can't get to the pollen yet that they're actually uh, consuming the bad bugs around so the larvae as I said uh, are really good a lot of the small wasps can be quite beneficial as well uh, they will attack uh, certain types of eggs and things. You've got uh, thrips, which will attack on mites. You've got all different types of mites. Now remember also that on the leaf of a plant, you do have microbial activity going on that we can't see. So when you do spray, you're also killing off that natural bacteria and microbes on there that are creating a balance that are actually doing something very similar to what we're looking at here, but on a leaf or around the stem and stalks of the plant. Now, you can also see in the middle bottom right, there's some blackish scale insects with wasp larvae developing in them. So what's happened is the wasps have come along and laid their eggs into them, and then they can, when the, the scale actually starts to grow, that wasp larvae will eat that inside, and that will be the natural food for it. So uh, yeah, those little tiny black wasps that you see going around, they are known to do that and a lot of the parasitic wasps will do that also will actually lay their larvae inside other eggs so that you know sometimes they are quite beneficial to have around now I just want to finish up with a few words here about the praying mantis now the praying mantis says it doesn't control pests because they eat both beneficial and pests but remember if you see praying mantis in your garden that means you've got a balance the reason being is because these guys need to eat pests as well, right? So you wouldn't just go and kill them off. You just look at them and go, you beauty, that's great. It means that we've got a natural balance and order and there's plenty of food in here for them to eat. So remember that we do need a balance of pests. We need to actually control that balance as best as we can by providing a natural ecosystem within our garden. And that you know can be done through companion planting, planting lots of different herbs and vegetables. Try not to plant so much in big massive rows. If you have to, put maybe four broccoli together and put something else around the outside of it, some companions and move again. The reason being is not only that will these pests just can easily jump from one plant to the next that they really like eating, is that they will get confused by the other scents and smells around the plants. And also some plants uh, like to uh, protect other plants around them for beneficial reasons. And if you keep your plants really, really healthy and provide them all the natural minerals and nutrients that they need and create this balance and order in the garden, you will find that the pests will control themselves and that you will have a beautiful thriving garden, whether it be a potted garden, a permaculture garden, a backyard vegetable garden, aquaponics, uh, any, anything like that you know, uh, you'll find that you will have much more success and also it's much better for the environment. Okay, so my name is Marty Ware from Marty's Garden on YouTube. I've left the link down below so you can go and download this poster. You may want to stick it up on your wall 
or bookmark it and share it with your friends because this is really important that we get the word out to help others grow organically and to start creating natural balance and order within their gardens to get more success. All right, we all know the rest of the reasons for growing fresh and healthy. And listen, if you haven't become a member of Marty's Garden, you can head over to Marty's Garden Community com and get the newsletter there. There's Happy House and Garden uh, in Facebook over there. I'm going to leave all the links down below for you guys. And remember, it's all about enjoying the gardening and sharing with others. Have a great day and we'll see you at the next video soon. Bye for now.